Thank you very much. I will speak in, in Italian. Grazie. È davvero un piacere. It is a pleasure for me being here today, and I thank you here. I want to thank the Biennale, the London School of Economics. It's a pleasure not only to be here to speak, but also to be here to listen. Just a small provocation to start. We might say that if I'm here today, as the mayor of Barcelona, representing the city of Barcelona, it is because a certain model of uh, economic development with a strong urban uh, approach has failed. I was a citizen who was not interested in politics, in parties, in career, in institutions, and instead I've become the mayor of Barcelona in just a couple of years. And this is evidence of the fact that something strong has happened. Not only bad things, uh, the failure of a certain model of economic development, of exploitation of the soil, of the territory, and of the citizens who live in the territory, but also nice aspects like, for example, the empowerment process for citizens, the mobilization, social mobilization that has changed things outside the institutions. And this will uh, be the first part of my contribution. And then some notes uh, about the urban agenda we are discussing, we have been discussing in the last few months uh, in view of uh, Habitat 3 in Quito. One year ago, the civic lists uh, gained the leader, leadership in four of the major cities in Spain, not only in Barcelona. And this was an unexpected victory. It was a surprise for many, and it was a real breakthrough in the political Spanish political system that had been dominated by a dual system up to that moment, two important parties that had been in power for 40 years. For the first time in the history of Spain, the municipalities uh, would not be governed by traditional parties, but rather by candidates like me belonging to civic lists, a kind of new dialogue space, an empowerment for the citizens with the large participation of movements and social participation. In order to understand, to better understand this agenda we are developing within institutions of these cities, you have to make a step backward. We could talk about May 2011 when the citizens, thousands of them, occupied the squares of many Spanish cities, creating a movement which is known as Los Indignados, uh, also defined as the movement of the 15th of May. This was a real uh, revolution that transformed economic crisis that has uh, hit the countries in the southern part of Europe in something different, into a political crisis. This movement questioned not only the social impact of the crisis, but also was a global challenge for the existing political uh, class for its inability to respond to the needs of the citizens, housing, jobs, education. And this has to be added up to the uh, widespread corruption. This movement was not just a rejection of politics in general, as the media maintain. Quite the reverse. It was a request for a different way of making politics. The municipalist alternative stopped in those municipalities where the movement was stronger in Madrid, Barcelona, or Valencia. Another aspect I can just mention that is important, however, because we know then that history books are written by other people. We are instead making history with our actions. There was the platform of those hit by mortgages, a platform that was created by citizens who had lost everything, who had 
uh, who had abusive loans with abusive clauses and who lost their house when the uh, real estate bubble uh, exploded. And this movement not only denounced this terrible reality, putting it on the table when it was not in the political agenda, but it also managed to transform this feeling of depression, of indignation and powerlessness into a movement of proposal, of action, of uh, of doing th something with this uh, slogan, si se puede, yes, we can which remember uh, the slogan by, uh, for, for, of the American administration. The model of growth of the previous years had been based on the development of the real estate market and in particular the uh, becoming financial of fundamental right that is a right to housing. From 2000 to 2007 in Spain, thousands and hundreds of thousands of houses were built and the houses did not uh, did not have uh, cheaper prices. Instead, prices rose uh, while uh, uh, wages went down and the labor market was uh, uh, always more precarious. And then the tragedy uh, came through, uh, the real estate speculation, uh, tragedies, loss of houses, depression, suicides, and many social pathologies. And this movement uh, started with, uh, uh, with the effort made by unknown people, those who had lost everything. Uh, that started to cons uh, people who were considered as uh, totally excluded from the system. Well, they managed to put in the public agenda problem that up to that moment had been considered had been considered as a private problem. So they started. Uh, denouncing this model, they started creating a community in the city where before just isolation and solitude existed. This uh, execution of uh, this uh, uh, seizing of the houses was a stop. They started renegotiating the loans. They recovered hundreds of empty apartments belonging to the banks. They collected millions of signatures to change the law. But the most important thing this movement managed to do was opening up a new horizon, a new horizon for what is possible. There was a new reality available. Thousands of citizens had said things have to be different. We do not want to be expelled from our city. We want our city. We are going to defend it. We are going to reconquer it. And although there was this very strong movement of hope and proposal, elections came by and a conservative majority won the People's Party that is still governing. Spain so far. And in these movements, like this platform, like the Los Indignados, originated this idea of institutional stalemate. And the need was felt to transform the new way of making politics from the streets to the institutions. Although we could change things with people in the streets, there was always this block with institutions, and they had the money and the resources for all of us. So we created this municipalist alternative that had both advantages and disadvantages. In the large cities, we had this opportunity in view of the general elections as the social mobilization had grown. And uh, the nature of that movement had been urban. And the municipality, as uh, a local administration, enabled us to plan a political agenda that was closer to the real interest and the needs of the citizen. We, uh, 
we saw that many of the laws that refer to the municipalities were passed by the central government, and this limited our autonomy. Nevertheless, we started this adventure, and we did so with a large participation of the citizens. We didn't want a new party with new faces to replace the old parties. We wanted to do something different from the very start. Both the electoral program, both our candidatures, both the ethical uh, code, everything was the result of uh, a debate, uh, of, the civil, of a civil debate that went on for months and is still going on. Although we had not electoral base, nor the support of the media, nor funds from the banks, on the 24th of May, we were the most voted political uh, uh, political uh, subject uh, in Barcelona. We interrupted this uh, institutional stalemate and we intervened with this new change. Now the problem is developing this program and implementing it. We had to respond to the social emergency that uh, affected all the most disadvantaged uh, sections of the populations, evictions uh, and uh, other uh, problems. We started our mandate with an emergency plan to respond to the urgent needs of the population. You can imagine what I'm referring to. We declared education and social services as essential services. We provided scholarships uh, and uh, uh, we uh, took away from the banks empty apartments, defining them new social housing to give a house to the evicted families. And we knew, we were aware, that these measures are not enough unless they are accompanied by structural measures that might favor a change in the management model of the city. A new liberal model had developed, but it had turned out to be a model that produced exclusions in enabled to guarantee the fundamental social rights and a source of disequalities. Against this hegemonic neoliberal model, we did deemed it necessary to develop a new model based on common goods with persons at the center of the urban project by developing a new urban agenda focused on the rights and the opportunities for everybody. Luckily enough, and we have to say this, we must not do everything from the start. Barcelona had a great economic association, urban potential with, an extraordinary, with extraordinary experiences of social innovation and urban participation. It was there. Planning and realization of a new model of the city could not be drawn at the table with closed doors. We had to ally and to involve the different political, economic, social actors by empowering citizens and their organizations, co-responsibility and co-production of public policies. Not to be too long, in this starting stage of our work with our difficulties and our limits, with, but also with many hopes, I would like to focus on four dimensions I think are fundamental for this new agenda for the city in Barcelona. Let us start by the first, the most urgent aspect, fight against disequality. Barcelona is not a poor city. It has never been. It is not now a poor city. It is a flourishing city that creates wealth and has a good position on the international uh, listing. Nevertheless, the impact of the crisis was not the same for all groups and territories, and it focused on the lowest wage uh, section of the population. And this further increased disequalities, both from the social and from the territorial point of view. Barcelona is a rich city with tourism, uh, a city that has an urban model, an urban structure that was a model for other cities. Well, Barcelona saw disequality growing at an incredible pace. We have a very close to each other the poorest and the richest neighborhoods in the cities. 
it is not just a problem of polarization or territorial uh, uh, breaking up. It is a risk for democracy. In order to face this problem, we are developing different actions. The most important is the Plan de Barrios, the plan for neighborhoods that has a special budget, 150 million for very vulnerable neighborhoods, not only in terms of investments, but also to promote their economic recovery and, above all, their economic and social reactivation. This equality cannot be solved by redistributing money alone. It is necessary for these processes to be accompanied by social empowerment, which is why we have to work in a new economic model able to guarantee prosperity, social cohesion, and environmental responsibility. To this end, the strategy we are following is based on the diversification of the economic model to, to support uh, uh, equity and sustainability. We want Barcelona to be the capital of innovation, an international reference for the development of a local economic model able to articulate prosperity, cohesion, and sustainability. It is necessary for this to recover the control of the public institution to define and develop a model of a city that can include community tradition that was typical of this city. A clear example of this idea of recovering the public leadership, a democratic leadership, is tourism. Tourism is an asset for the city. It is very important. 13% of the GDP of the city uh, is made by tourism. And it is expanding. But the lack of regulations over the last few years created discontent in the citizens inhabiting many of the most touristic neighborhood neighborhoods. They are expelled by the tourist industry. And the new real estate bubble might create similar to what happened uh, before the crisis. I would like to tell more about tourism, about the economy, about the recovery of productive activities, and about a more responsible economy. We are changing the rules for the negotiations between the municipality and private businesses. We are introducing different clauses, environmental clauses, ethical clauses for public competition. I would like to tell something more uh, about the uh, uh, metropolitan uh, uh, aspect, but I will do so later on. As regards an international area for the great global themes, the crisis of the migrant and the great channel and the great challenge of the climate change, we are witnessing one of the most serious humanitarian crises in our continent. We are committed uh, in an interurban uh, collaboration plan, and we are, we are putting at stake our credibility in Europe. But the problem is that the international situation is still seen in terms of states, and we do not listen to cities. Cities are the place where everyday life takes place. The cities are very close to the citizens. We are the political space that has no excuses and that must provide responses. We are going towards Habitat 3, habit towards Quito. We want to take part in this discussion. We are doing so with great responsibility. And the urban agenda of Quito, we want to tell that we want to discuss mobility, environmental issues, econom economy, innovation, technology. But above all, we want to talk about the need for a new governance. Also, those states who want to be effective will not be effective unless they base their effort on the cooperation with the cities in order to design public policies, to implement them, to evaluate them. You have to do this with the cities. Otherwise, the states will fail, as is the case now in Europe. We do not want to renounce 
our idea of the right to the city, the right to the city as a place of rights for the citizens. We know that U.S. and China do not want to speak to the, of the right of the city in Habitat 3. We want to do so. Cities have to be the space for democracy. Thank you.